When our tail waters drop in height and there's less water coming down them, we end up with long flat sections of water like you can see behind me. And this water type is perfect for fishing nymph under dry. So what I've got today, I've got a nine foot three weight, a three weight silk line on this one. And I've got about a 13 to 15 foot leader. And I've just got a CVC spun dry there. That's gonna be my indicator, like my, my dry for this setup. And then I've got about 70 centimeters to a 2.5 millimeter beaded nymph. And I'm gonna jump into this flat water behind and hopefully show you how there's quite a lot of fish in this type of water. And it's not that appealing to look at, but if you take your time and fish through it carefully, you can find it can produce some nice fish or lots of fish. When you're fishing this technique, you do want to make sure you actually check your cast. You need that nymph to kick over upstream so you've got good contact throughout your drift. If it lands to the side, it's going to drag. You may not feel the take. That wind's a bit blowy. I kind of wanted that cast to land a little bit closer to my weed edge here. There's a fish. That's a really nice one. He was right on that little edge, that pocket of the weed there. You got all slack up. It's a nice fish. How cool is that brown? Well, there we go. Nymph under dry on the edge of the weed there. And he is a pretty nice little fish. Really nice fish. We'll pop him back. Looks like he's almost hooked on the outside of the mouth. Oh, just by that amount of skin. That is incredible. That's why you don't go too hard on your fish because the fly pops like that. Should be another one on this edge, that sort of line. Not in the main current, but just off to the side of it. A lot easier to fish this in the sun because you can actually see these weed pockets here and where you're casting. But on a lot of our tail waters, like the tumut, say, it doesn't matter because there isn't the weed like there is on the Goulburn here. I haven't thrown many way over in the bubble line in case it's a bit deep, but I should probably give it a go. So I fished through that little section there 
and I only had the one take, which was a little disappointing, but I think I, as you can see, the water's quite dirty here. Um, I reckon I misread the depth. So I reckon I fished it through too shallow. So what I'm actually doing here is I've just grabbed more 7X and I'm just gonna extend this tip. I'm probably gonna double it and go to maybe 140 centimeters below my dry and put on a 2.8 millimeter bead and fish it through like that and fish it a little bit wider and see if I can catch another one or two. So we'll see. All right, so I've walked back down, lengthened out my leader here quite a lot maybe too much but I'll see if I can catch some fish out wider because I think as I said I misread that the first time through caught the one nice one but I feel like there should have been a few more there so we'll see how this goes This has pulled my whole leader length out a heap. It's a lot, lot longer now. A little bit hard to cast, but hopefully it's worth it for the fish. There he is. What a difference that dropper length makes in getting you an extra fish. Only a small one, but I think there should be some more to come. And he's eating an orange bead too. Nice and slow there. I'll be quite late when the fish does eat it, so I'm gonna have to hit him pretty hard if there is one there, just because there's a lot of slack. But I got him there. not a bad fish well I haven't caught heaps but hopefully that shows you how just this flat water can be productive and you don't have to spend too long here the key is just mixing up your uh, mixing up the depth of your your nymph and a little bit of the weight it just might get you a couple of extra fish like it's done here for me that's another brown Come on, buddy. I think it's wrapped around his gill. Yeah. There we go. Was indeed. And there's the fly up in the top lip. Maybe we have one more in us. This was a little bit higher than I expected because this is just deep, swirly, nothing water. Very awkward to fish. But you've got to fish it somehow and no one generally does, so... You've got to be very patient. I feel like I've got another one in me here. Might need a fly change. If I'm refishing the same water, but there's one. Oh. Just had to be. Oh. Had to be another one there. I'm walking around with a giant clump of weed behind me here. So nothing cha has changed from my setup that I was fishing when I started other than I've just doubled the length, uh, the distance between my dry and my nymph, as you can see there in the air. Here's another brown. Where are you? Stay out of that weed. The really fit fish.
Really fit fish. Thank you, thank you, fish. Very nice. He's a lovely looking fish actually. Really pretty. He was in the exact same spot as that last one. This is that channel we were talking about earlier, where it all funnels in. This is a rainbow, this one, I think. Yeah, he is. Perfect. There he is. He's a healthy little rainbow. This line's tangled around me. It's really interesting how they're eating and casting up here, but they're eating the fly down here. So it's almost like it needs that time to get down line in the same current again. Get the leader with me. Well as you could see there, nymph under dry in the flat nothing water, not super appealing but still plenty of fish and worthwhile fishing so Hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. Cheers.